up, beautiful people? Just got in. Went to the gym this morning. Oh, Fawn was up. Hi, Fawn. Hey, baby. Uh, anyway, so went to the gym. Then I picked up some more furniture for the new BB uh, set. By BB, I mean Barbell Brigade. And then I went to pick up lunch. And I was sitting here, and I was enjoying the view of my girl, Fawn, and Briggs that are sitting in front of me. And I was just admiring, specifically, Fawn's beauty. Because she's not the most symmetrical dog out there. So, yes, most dogs are pretty damn symmetrical. Um, I'm not talking about their fur patterns or anything like that. I'm just talking about their face and their body and all that. Um, you know, they look pretty perfect. But Fawn, unfortunately, I don't know her history because she was adopted. But her ear, the flap is down. And that was one of the things that actually turned Bart off about her when we were looking to see what dog we were going to adopt. He didn't like that about her. He wanted both ears to be like Briggy. You see how Briggy's ears, they're both pointed up? That's what Bart really likes. He likes symmetry. And he likes, uh, he likes the dog to look a little bit more aggressive. Because when you have a little flappy ear, you don't look aggressive. You don't look like you're about to kill someone. You look like you're like, hey, buddy, what's up? So you look really sweet. So when he saw that about her, he was like, oh, I don't really like it. But he didn't voice it at the moment. Um, when we were looking at dogs, we couldn't just go. It wasn't like your typical pound where you go and then, like, the dogs are in cages. And then you just pick whatever looks cute. Uh, we went to a specific German Shepherd only uh, shelter. And you weren't even allowed to see these dogs. First, you go into an interview room. You get interviewed to ask you about your occupation, where the dogs would sleep, if you have any other dogs, what kind of dogs. If you do have them, what kind of dogs they are, the age, the breed, the gender, because that's all very important when, you know, adding another dog to your already existing household. Um, or your already existing dog in the household. So, you know, we did the whole interview process. Then once we passed that interview slash screening, then we were allowed to come back um, a separate day with our dogs so that they could meet each other and make sure that we put two dogs together that are going to have compatible temperaments. Because if you have an aggressive dog and then you, or a aggressive or a super alpha dog, and then you pair them up with another aggressive or super alpha dog, then guess what's going to happen? They're both going to fight each other so that they can be the ultimate alpha. So Tyson, for example, was that. Anyway, I'm getting on this whole new tangent, but my point is, we couldn't even see the dogs, um, so, or we couldn't see the dogs at once, so they had to bring out one by one, and then we kind of had to see how, you know, our dog, our current dog would react to the new dog, and how they, like, smell each other, and if they respect each other, and, you know, just how that whole chemistry is working out, um, and then, you know, once we would view that, then they would remove that dog, and then, uh, they would bring in a new dog. So we did about, we didn't do too many, I think we did about like one or two or three or something like that. It was a really small number. But then once Fawny came out and I saw how she was reacting to us and it was reacting to just the whole situation and our dog, I immediately, and this is going to sound fucking weird, and but it's going to sound like what it's going to sound like, but it, this is 100% the truth. I felt like this immediate comfort and, and um, familiarity with her. Like, I, f I saw her and I felt her temperament. Like, I knew she was scared, but I immediately knew that she was going to be a really great and sweet dog. So, um, immediately I said, I want that one. Like, I want her. And Bart was like, are you sure? Like, you don't want to just try another one? I'm like, no, this is it. Like, I don't need to see another one. We saw what I needed to see, and I, I, f I felt really connected to her immediately. So... I guess at that moment, Bart was like, oh, but her ear, she just looks dopey. But he didn't voice it because he saw how committed and how confident I was in that decision that he was like, fuck it, I'm going to support you, I'm going to get it. But then, like, a few years later, he, he reveals, like, hey, you know what, I really wasn't really happy when you picked Fawn because of her ear, but now I've grown to love it because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's her. Like, that's her little, that's her little quirk. And, um... I guess I was thinking of that because as soon as I sat here, I just thought how, you know, she's a very beautiful dog and she's very sweet, but she's not your typical German shepherd looking kind of dog. You know, she has that dopey ear. But obviously because dogs are animals and not, I mean, we're animals too, but um, they don't have self-awareness. Like she's not going to be self-conscious of this ear, but 
I just thought to myself, like, I need to learn to be more like Fawn, where it's like, I do have self-awareness, but I shouldn't care about shit that doesn't matter. Like, specifically with, like, I guess appearance, maybe? I don't know. Like, initially I'm thinking appearance now because that's what I'm looking at with Fawn. So I'm like, well, I'm not really self-conscious when it comes to my appearance or whatever. Obviously, look at this. I have, like, so many stress pimples going on, but I don't give a shit. Like, my hair is all whack. I'm just, like... Whatever, I just went, I just got back from the gym. I was dealing with a bunch of different people when I was buying stuff. But, I mean, that's not going to deter me. Like, the way I look on the outside is not going to prevent me from doing anything. But, um, my point being is, that's something that Fawn is teaching me. Like, I think I, I'm trying to adopt a more, like, be in my surroundings, but also be very aware of my surroundings in terms of, what is it that I can learn from this situation? What is it that I can learn from the things that are in front of me? So as I was sitting here, I was looking at Fawn and I'm like, oh, that's what I can learn. I can learn to be more comfortable in my own skin. So maybe I could have just started with that and then gone on this whole long tangent afterwards. But sorry, I'm not like Bart. And Bart gives you like the best stories and he structures it perfectly in his... The way he can articulate is awesome, and he gives you, like, the best, like, hands down, the best freaking metaphors and analogies known to man. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I just do goofy shit. And even at that, I do it pretty mediocre. But hey, I'm going to look at my surroundings and maybe the people in it and close to me, and I'm going to try to learn from things that they know and try to adopt those and, like... Be more articulate. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just listen to Bart. I'm going to be like, blah, articulation. Anyway, I'm going to eat now. But here. Because you're so curious. Probably not. I'll show you what I got. I was craving something really light. So I got the, I got, hold. I got poke it, baby. I miss Hawaii so much. I think that's why I got poke. Poke makes me feel very happy inside. And the poke is kind of whatever at this place, but I don't know anything better. So I'm going to eat. Ha, huh, Fawn. Thank you for being so cute, Fawny. Thank you for being so cute, Wiggy. They're like, shut the hell up. I'm doing a little bit of house cleaning. See? This already looks a lot cleaner. Since we have black furniture, you can see that it collects dust. And it usually collects dust in about like a week. It really is crazy, so this is all clean. But do you guys remember that little beanbag chair that David got us? And then uh, the one that the beanbags sit on all the time and it's like super compressed? Well, I wanted to even it out and I wanted it to let it breathe, but I had no <laughs> idea that moving it around and letting it breathe and rolling it out would turn into this. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know how the fuck that happened. <laughs> oh my god. Bricky, go over there. So they could see how fucking huge it is compared to you. <laughs> Come here. Let me see. I want you to have perspective. Come here. Sit. 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 Look at that. Oh, she moved. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. Just happened. We don't know. <laughs> what do you we mean? Didn't shoot it. We don't know. What are you talking about? If you didn't shoot it. We don't oh, know. We don't know. <laughs> oh, it's locked. Oh, I thought you already sent it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> she drifted. <laughs> Who is it? Oh fuck. <laughs> he got a leech. The homie Blee! Oh, Hi Blee. Blee, we have a present for you. What's the present? So you drove all the way out here for nothing. Really? Yeah, we're not gonna go set up. We're not? We just decided last minute that we're not set well, uh, Bart decided last he minute. Wants to do it. But set up in the morning? Yeah, yeah. nine. Because we can't even see anything right now. That's what I told you guys yesterday. So you're gonna set up and then that's, that's You're gonna pick up Salamite? We, we all have to go because I have to pick up Salamite. You have to go? Yeah. To pick up Salamite. We will, um, 
the flight's at 9.55. It arrives at 9.55. Yeah. So you can technically set up, I guess. I mean, even what if you pick up something, like, you still have time to set up at like 11. That is true. But you gotta meet here at 11.30. Because you gotta meet Matt Vincent here because he needs a car full to the office. So what we'll do, we can go there early and we just drive ah. separate. And then uh, I think we should drive three cars because that way, if you have to go pick up Silent Mike, you go pick up Silent Mike. If you if it takes a while to set up and I'm still dirty and need to come back and shower and get ready for the thing, I can Wait, still be. Wait, I'm there. filming. Yeah. I'm gonna be in it. Yeah. Why? Can you be in it? You want me to be in it? Yeah. Why? Because you're more knowledgeable and you have more flow with them. But you've been doing it. I know, but I'm more host. Yeah, you're a host. Anyway. You guys keep smelling me. So you want to be the you want to be the builder then tomorrow? Cuz ideally we would probably want four people in it. That'd be the best. Okay, I see what you're saying. All right, we'll but do that. We'll I'm do just what you said. That as an emergency. Okay, call. we'll do what you said. Ludwig's not here. Yeah, see, Ludwig's not here. That's why. Yeah. So ideally four people. it's probably going to be you and me, you me and those two. But then I can get ready fast. So once it co comes to your I can too. cut off time, I want you to come. I have my time. emergency fast ready setters. Fine. Setting. Uh, why is Matt Benson coming here? Because this is the original, well, I asked Bart, and the original meetup spot was here. Was here. So we just carpool, because we didn't know we had all this set up still. Um, can he meet there? Like last night, he's already in LA. Can you text somebody like, hey, we can talk to him if you need us at the I had to give him, do you guys have your contact? Because he has to call to get into the office. Because the weekend. He has my stuff. contact. Just okay. tell him, send him the call, uh, address to the new place, and tell him to call me at, uh, he just asked today, is that the address on the call sheet Bart's place? So I'll change it for him now. Yeah. Your team's doing a good job of pressing down that cushion, though. Sure. Just, the address in the office. You tell them it's in the, the it's in an email that Michael sent. Just write Michael. Yeah, yeah, just write, like, in your search. Yeah. We got a sure, lot. you guys don't want to keep it slept on? No, we got a lot. We're fucking stuck. I ain't a fucking... Here, fuck. let's, let's tell like, Here, can fuck, you, uh... Fuck, fuck. So my mom brought his food. That's the whole thing I was trying to... That was the point I was trying to make earlier. I forgot to vlog because I hadn't seen my parents in a long time. And my mom came up with a really cool idea. And she's like, every month I want to cook for you guys because you guys are so busy. You guys can never come and see me. I can never go and see you because you guys are always fucking busy all the fucking time. So let me just cook for you. So she asked me, for the month of February, when are we doing it? I said, the 13th. She's like, damn. She's like, what am I making? I said, your famous cilantro chicken. It's not a Mexican dish. I feel like my family made it up at some point. And uh, that's what she brought today. Some cilantro chicken. There it is. It looks like stew, but it's not stew. So it's just chicken, potatoes, carrots, and then she made her lemon rice. And it's just like a white rice with a lot of limon. And then she brought salad, flan, and some like jello shit. How did you like her food? I thought it was delicious. Have you ever had anything like this? I've had cilantro chicken before. With her? Yeah, she made it? At her house. Oh, fuck. I could have sworn that you guys never tried it. Oh, I had it once at her house. It was delicious. Uh, yeah, my mom My mom swears that she's not a good cook, though. It's delicious. Yeah, my mom kills it. She was so cute. She was so nervous. She's like, I'm stressing out. I overcooked my potatoes. My mom's cute. She stresses out over the dumbest shit. I'm going to hook the homie Billy up because that phone needs to gain some weight. That's it. That's it. There's no need in cooking him up if he's not going to eat it. Yes. He won't. Fun. Look at that nose. Look at that nose. Look at that. He didn't hit her. I wish I did. Hi, baby. Hi, mom. Hey. I'm not talking to you. Look at his butt, though. How does it feel to have such a big butt? Do you recommend it for the girls that have no butt? Or the boys that want a bigger butt? I don't know. It's hard to find clothes to buy. None of my clothes. Here, he's buy. hooking you up. That none of the clothes fit him? It's you? hard to find clothes that fit me well. And you were saying um, you get a little bit taller, right, when you're sitting? When I sit down, it's the butt cushions. What's that? I already talked to them about my little trick right here. I like to put a wet paper towel on. Yeah, I already talked to them about it. Oh. I explained the step by step. Where'd you learn that from? I just ever since I was growing up, my mom would do the same thing. Yeah? We had a lot of leftovers, yeah. Big cuny. Pablo, that shirt doesn't fit you anymore. I know. But you're gonna start cutting when? Uh, in a few weeks. 
He's so loud. Just say how. Oh, she doesn't oh. even know what she's saying. She's just saying a bunch of mumbo jumbo. She's just rambling on.